been angry, right? We've all been. Like last night, I swing by Walmart after work to pick up a few things and, like an idiot, I put the carton of eggs sideways in the bag. You can imagine what happened next. I'm laughing now, but I was pretty pissed. But have you ever been build an armored vehicle out of a tractor and destroy a whole town pissed? Today's story is one of remarkable ingenuity and sheer spite. Two things that, like it or not, have historically combined to produce some truly monumental achievements. This is Marvin Heemeyer. He was a welder and an auto repair shop owner in the city of Grand Lake, Colorado. In 1992, Heemeyer bought two acres of land from the government to build a new muffler shop in the next town over, Granby. He ended up selling some of that land to a man named Cody Docheff, who intended to build a concrete factory right next door. Though he might agree to the price of $250,000, he walked back on the deal and started asking for a lot more money, up to a million dollars by some accounts. Either way, Heemeyer sold the land to Dochev, whose plans to build the big concrete factory weren't set in stone due to zoning. I realize now that I should say set in concrete, that would make more sense. Anyway, he couldn't build the concrete factory he bought the land for because of zoning issues. So the land sat there unused for years, and it served as an access point to Heemeyer's shop. Kind of a win-win for the guy, if you think about it for a while. That changed in 2001 when the city approved a rezoning proposal which would allow Dochev to finally build his concrete factory. Heemeyer fought the decision for years, spending a lot of time and money in the process and getting shut down by the city every step of the way. The very tractor used in the rampage, and if there is ever an appropriate use for the word rampage, this is it, was originally bought to build an alternate route to his muffler shop. A proposal which the city also rejected. Seeing no other recourse, the dude Iron Man himself an armored vehicle out of that tractor. Using his combined automotive and welding expertise, as well as lots of concrete and metal bought from an automotive dealer in Denver, he spent over a year turning that vehicle into an unstoppable weapon of righteous revenge. Now, a tractor is formidable enough, what with the sheer power and size of the machine. Now imagine one that's also bulletproof and blast proof but he wasn't done he also hooked up several cameras around his makeshift tank giving him full external visibility he also encased the cameras in three inch thick bulletproof plastic and even rigged a complex system of compressed air nozzles to blow away debris from the cameras showing just how well thought out this outburst of unmatched mayhem really was now you might notice I said tank earlier? Well, the Killdozer, as it was dubbed by the internet, had offensive capabilities that went beyond simply running into things and turning businesses into insurance write-offs. Assuming such thing could even be claimed for insurance, how, how is there a box in the form for some guy went crazy, turned a tractor into a tank and wrecked the city? Is there, I, I should, where's my insurance forms? The Killdozer had also been fitted with several weapons, including a goddamn 50 caliber rifle. And to further drive home the point of how committed Heemeyer was to this plan, he welded himself shut inside of the tractor. He had no intention of ever getting out once Granby's day of reckoning began. Now this really should go to show you how crazy slash dedicated Heemeyer was to this whole idea of his, right? Because he had over a year to acquire all the metal and the concrete and to put all of this together, the cameras, the air hose system, the, the weapons. And usually when you're really mad and about to do something crazy, if you don't do it right away, people mellow out. You realize it isn't worth the trouble and you just move on with your life. But this guy, he was laser focused on this idea. He really wanted to destroy this town. Probably the only thing he changed his mind on throughout planning this thing was how much concrete and metal he actually needed. So on June 4th, 2004, Killdozer exploded through the wall of Heemeyer's muffler shop. I mean, it was a suicide mission, so it's not like there was any point of carefully backing out the front gate, right? His tractor slash tank then drove through the concrete plant itself. I mean, 
It was right next door and it was the source of all of his misery. How could he not? The town hall building, the town library, the offices of the newspaper that wrote negative columns about his attempt to prevent the building of said concrete factory, the home of the mayor's widow, which was a dick move, let's be honest, and a whole bunch of other buildings. City officials had to use the reverse 911 system. That's when emergency services contact you to text people where the killdozer was going next to help get bystanders to not stand so by. And yes, this means Killdozer was effectively being live tweeted, like the Oscars or the breakup going over there two tables over at Olive Garden. Now, for years, Heemeyer came to embody the very idea of a single man fighting against government injustice, going out of his way not to harm anyone not involved in the dispute. However, this is a very romanticized version of the events. In reality, Heemeyer was took over by Heemeyer himself. He didn't have to sell the land, and while it's too bad for him that the plans for the concrete factory were eventually approved by the city, ruining his business, that's kind of the gamble he took when he sold the land off to the Dochefs. And speaking of the Dochefs, when Heemeyer set off to demolish their concrete factory, Cody Dochef got into his own tractor to try to stop the Killdozer, in what's probably the closest thing to a Transformer fight scene we'll ever get in real life, by the way. Naturally, a regular Earth Mover was no match for the armored behemoth that was the Killdozer, and Heemeyer was able to push his contender off to the side without much effort. Heemeyer also fired several shots at Dochef during this confrontation. It's kind of by sheer luck that no one got hurt. He also fired upon several propane tanks and power transformers. If they had exploded, there could have been several fatalities. He also shot at state patrol officers and some of the buildings he wrecked were occupied until just before Killdozer flattened their walls. At the town library, for instance, there was an early education program going on, so lots of kids. So he wasn't exactly a hero. Now, back to Killdozer. Being that a tractor is not exactly a speedy vehicle, this was a slow motion rampage. So much so that news programs actually show the footage sped up. And because of the sluggish nature of a tractor, law enforcement agents had several opportunities to inspect it up close and even climb on it, Shadow of the Colossus style, trying to find a weakness. And of course, there were. None. And that's when the story turns even more movie-like. According to several sources, then-Governor Bill Owens actually considered requesting the National Guard to send an AH-64 Apache... I pronounced that wrong, didn't I? Apache... Apache? Apache attack helicopter to blast the tractor from the skies with Hellfire missile. Can you f***ing imagine? Owens denies this, of course, but like I said, several law enforcement sources have independently confirmed that Owens only changed his mind because the killdozer eventually got stuck in the basement of one of the buildings it was killdozing. And that's when law enforcement agents heard a single shot fired from within the tractor. Heemeyer had punched out. Even with the tractor fully stationary and no longer putting up a fight, Law enforcement still took hours to finally breach the armor around the killdozer. And that's after explosives failed to strip away the protective shell of the tractor. They tried blowing it up three times, then grabbed blow torches, which is an odd order of escalating things. So you'd think they would go for the more delicate and precise sounding blow torches, not be able to do it and then try to blow the whole thing up. Killdozer remains to this day one of the most remarkable events in contemporary American folklore and no doubt it'll be discussed for decades to come. If you enjoy videos like this, let me know in the comments below. If it's your first time coming here, leave a like, maybe subscribe, hit me up on social media, I'm very active over there, perhaps too active. And that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done.